What's your door knock sound like, Zach? Mine? Yeah. It's, uh, well, how am I going to do it here? Oh. That's the same I, as Chris. No, I, I no, don't He I doesn't don't have finish. the finish. He doesn't <laughs> have the finish. <laughs> because I like the mystery. You're like, bum, 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 bum. And then <laughs> Wait, you leave it done? <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't have more? anything else there. <laughs> the yeah. mystery of it all. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm your host, Austin Lope Silvero, and I'm here with Chris Ball, Zach McElwain, and Roger Short. The LIA podcast takes you out of the classroom and into the conversations of top producing agents and life insurance sales so that you can level up your business. For cliff notes and resources, visit liapodcast.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad for show updates. Thanks for joining us. Today we are talking about something that when I first learned that you all did this, I was kind of weirded out. Um, it's this concept that we've come to know as door knocking. And, you know, I in this digital world that we live in, or maybe that I live in, like, Chris, is door knocking still... Does it work? <laughs> yes, and I'll, I'll tell you what, Austin, I was weirded out by it too. Like when I first heard the concept, I, I thought it was like um, selling encyclopedias or yeah, <laughs> or vacuuming yourself. <laughs> vacuum sales. They still do that stuff, man. Or they globe sales. Sales. Maybe not. Mm, I <laughs> yeah. don't think so, Chris. If you are selling encyclopedias and you're good at it, please call us. <laughs> <laughs> please call us. But, uh, you know, canvassing, I'm using quote fingers, and, right. and, and the neighborhood type of, you know, type of thing. That's what I, I believed. Um, but, yeah, it's, it does work. It's very effective. Uh, but we don't do that. I mean, I should have said that first and then <laughs> said it's very effective. We don't canvas. We work with leads. Uh, we go see people. We do things, quote, unquote, the old-fashioned way and introduce ourselves. And uh, we, we have a lot of success with it. I think that really gives you uh, the confidence to go to the door, knowing that you do have a lead, that you do have a name, that it's not a completely random door, and you know they requested some information. But a lot like you, Chris, I'm not going to lie. When I started, like for the first like <laughs> five or six door knocks, I was like, please don't be home. <laughs> please don't answer. Isn't that a weird thing? thing? You know? I know. And I'm I, out here to meet people. I don't want anyone Please to don't home. answer. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but then you know, uh, I quickly realized, like, what am I doing? Like, I'm here for a reason, and then my whole mind shift changed. But, um, yeah, I didn't want anybody to <laughs> – Anybody to answer the door because I just wanted to be able to, hey guys, uh, nope, didn't see anybody today. Nope, not one person. Nobody was home all day long, ever. They all went on vacation. Wow. Especially that first spring week. Break. Especially that first <laughs> week when I was sitting in the car watching them do that door knock. Yeah. <laughs> Trudging through the mud, hoping no one's home. What is that mindset that you all have to have to make door knocking successful? I think the, the biggest thing there is to not think about yourself. And not think about your feelings and what you're going through. Um, you need to think about there's a reason why they filled out a card. There's a need for this family. There's something someone is expecting somebody, um, and you need to you need to figure out who it is and fill that void and that need and make sure this family's protected. So putting it on them, it's more like oh well. I, you know, if I'm an Amazon delivery guy, I got to get them their package. You know, Austin's expecting this package here, so I need to get it to him. And if he never showed up, they're going to be like, where's he at? So instead of thinking, oh, I really don't want to go. I have anxiety. I hope they're not home. Any of that, like, it's it's not about me. It's not. It's about putting the client first and taking care of their needs. Every single lead card, every single person we're going to see. I think a lot of our agents, when – they think about the idea of just routing their leads and going and door knocking these leads. They think like these people are completely caught off guard and how do I overcome all these objections? They, they must not have requested information. And so that's kind of the mindset, but it's not. And so as soon as you identify who you are and why you're there, uh, the recognition of the request takes place and, and the dynamic changes. And so if we can understand that going in, it makes all the difference because you're just getting information that they had already requested. You just have to identify yourself, overcome a few barriers, and then proceed. Now, Austin, as far as the other side of mindset, we have to be in control of what we've been dealing with in our lives. Um, when we go when we go to the door, we can't be angry or arguing at our kids in the morning when they're trying to get on the school bus, or we can't be in a bad mood or, or got in a fight with our girlfriend or anything like that. 
we have to be ready to go. We have to be positive. And I always tell everybody that I work with, when we're going out there, we don't know what our clients are going through. We don't know if they're in a good mood. What are they dealing with? Are they sick? Are they not feeling good? Um, are they dealing with a, a family member that has recently passed away? We have no idea. But the only thing we can control is being a bright spot in their life. We need to go to the door. We need to not carry all of our baggage as far as our energy and negativity to the door with us. We need to come with a smile. We need to come with the energy, with the right attitude, because that's going to be a huge factor in going to the door. If I'm not in the right mindset and my client's not in the right mindset, I'm never going to get into the door. Yeah. And I'm and honestly, if I'm not in the right mindset and you can tell if you're not, if you really don't want to get in the door or if you're not expecting to get into the door. That means, hey, I need to turn on a different song in the car. I need to pull <laughs> on the right. side of the road. I need to go to the gas station, get a drink, take a breather, go to a local park there, pull a basketball out of my trunk, shoot some hoops, whatever you need to do to just get your <laughs> mind right. Everyone's because just carrying a random basketball in their trunk. <laughs> I just bought one the other day at keep, Walmart you know, for $4.88. Did you? Just to put in my trunk. To, That's a good idea. It's great. I keep a bowling ball and some pins. Yeah. And just, <laughs> I've, I've seen that. that. I pull into a cul-de-sac and just you know throw some strikes, pick up a turkey or two. But they need a mental reset is what you're saying <laughs> yeah, because their attitude to. has to be correct. Whatever yeah, that mental you, reset it, is it for is you. It is all over your body when you're approaching that door. Even you know your eyebrows flexed all aggressively You know, like you're looking at me now. Any, you know, anything. That your that body language. Yeah. They, they read you and they feed off that. But also, it's the other way. If I'm going and everything's sunshine and rainbows and I'm smiling and cheesing and they're at the door, and I'm like, how are you doing today, Miss Jones? It's going to be like, oh, well, I'm pretty good. you know. And it makes them feel good. And then that energy is half the door knock. And that all comes with the mindset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So know, know that the client is expecting a response of sometimes, somewhere, somehow, and... Number two, you have to mentally prepare to have a great day and be prepared to engage them at a level to say, I'm going to actually brighten their day today. And if you have those two things in mind, things generally go well. Are there other preparations that you can do beyond mindset for when you're door knocking? Yeah, there's there's plenty of stuff. I think uh, how we how we approach the door, what we look like when we approach the door, looking uh, approachable and professional. How's that? You like that? Mm. Approachable and professional our crew, uh, I mean, we wear ID badges, we have a clipboard, we have our materials ready, we have the leads in front of us. Um, there are some other things. Yeah, and as far as when you say looking professional, like um, I'm not meaning, you know, having a full suit and tie and walking up there like you're FBI, you know. Um, well, they'll think some people will think you're a bill collector. Yeah, <laughs> or, I, you don't want that no. because you're you're separating yourself from them. You know, my mindset as far as looking at that is I want to be a real person. I want to be as a genuine person as I can. And what is a, some, you know, what is your buddy going to come over and watch uh, a sports game on, on the weekend? I'm just going to wear jeans and, and a nice little polo. So I'm looking professional, but I'm looking casual. I'm some relaxed. people's buddies do not wear that, Zach. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, right. I think there probably needs to be some clarification. But, but nobody, well, I'm going to wear my Washington Nobody's buddy tank comes over with a suit and tie on, that's for sure. No, they don't. Yeah. So let's for, put some parameters you know, on business that. Business casual. Mm-hmm. Business casual, but d- dress nice. But yeah, it's not in it's not in full full attire. Like we wear a logo polo. Yeah, a logo polo. Um, this, the idea of like a clean car, you know, a smile on your face. Look in the mirror before you go. I think we've talked about it in this previous. You know, look in the mirror. Would you yeah. want to meet you and have a conversation with you if if if, if you didn't know you? Um, you know, your shoes say a lot about who you are. You know, you you can wear a pair of jeans with a really nice pair of shoes, and it changes the full outfit. With a pair of jeans and a pair of ratty tennis shoes, like I've it's completely that. different. I have learned that. Yeah, I want to say thank you to you guys. Yeah, yeah. you guys have upped my say. wardrobe game over the last three years. <laughs> so yeah, the way you look, what you're what you're carrying. Um, I mean, little things like what do people see when they walk to the? If you put yourself in the mindset of the person who's coming to the door when you're knocking, what are they seeing as they're walking to the door? So when they're looking out the window or they're looking at the side light or side window of their door, what do they see? So these are some things like what's happening with your car? Where is your car? 
Do you have uh, arms loaded up with uh, a bag with all your computer and all your presentation material with you? Do you look like you're coming in to sell vacuum cleaners? Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you look like you're coming to stay a while? Do you look like you're coming to stay a while or do you look like you're inquiring about something or just looking for some clarity or direction? So there's there's a lot of pieces there. So if you put yourself in the mindset of the or perspective of the the homeowner, think about what's happening on the outside. So yeah, we do some things up front. Uh, Zach, you want to talk about kind of the way we approach uh, the home, where it starts? Because door knocking doesn't start at the door; it literally starts when you pull into that neighborhood. Yeah. Well, essentially, you know, I've always trained that uh, door knocking starts when you pull into the market. And here's why, you know, you may have traveled a certain amount of distance to get to your market and you may be pulling at a gas station. Well, the lady you hold the door for to, to walk into the gas station, that may be your client. It may <laughs> or be, her sister. Yeah, or a friend or a family or a referral opportunity. Like we have no idea who these people are. So we can't uh, be rude to them or say, hey, buddy, you know, you just spit on my shoes. Like you, you, <laughs> you have to be aware that you are now presenting yourself as the professional in this area. Okay, so that that's at that's at the gas station. That's driving down the street. I always have a rule: as soon as you're in market, if you see anybody walking their dog or going down the street, I'm waving to everybody because I want to spread as many good vibes as I can. Mm, oh, yeah. that's a nice guy. Because if I don't, they're gonna be like, "Hmm, I've never seen that car before. I wonder who that is." Oh, they're going to Betty's house. Is Betty in trouble? Like, just people naturally like are curious. But if it's all smiles and waving, and she may say, Betty, who is that nice guy smiling at you, waving at me today? Or, oh, yeah, that that's my insurance man. He really helped us out. He helped us save some money. And, I mean, oh, the really? referral starts there. You know? You know? So everything is an opportunity, and you have to remember that. So always being prepared. As far as what Roger was saying is having your leads routed um, so you know where you're going. And the simple fact is there's many ways you can do that, but the simple fact is I don't want to – pull into a client's driveway or home and then start flipping through my leads sitting in the car trying to figure out, okay, which one is Miss Betty? Let me let me see what house I'm at, what address I'm at. Because what that's going to do, it's going to allow that client to get out of their chair, look out the window, um, look out the door and say, who is this guy in my house? What's this car doing here? I don't know. Um, but it prepares them to be able to A, hide, turn the TV off, turn the lights off, decide not to answer or already decide they're not interested or don't want anything and they have really have no idea who I am. Or instill fear if they see you going through paperwork. <laughs> You're like, oh man. <laughs> right. And it's the same thing for you. Like Austin, if you you know, if, if somebody pulled into your driveway and they got out like they knew exactly where they're at and you know their car's running, their doors open and they're approaching your home, you're gonna be like, Oh, well somebody's here to talk to me or deliver something or you know, they know what they're doing. Rather, if somebody pulls in and they just sit in your driveway for three or four minutes, you as the client, how would your, you know, uh, what would your thought process be on that? I wouldn't answer the door probably. Right. <laughs> but you might have a lot higher chance of answering the door if we pull in and the door's open, the car's running, and I'm coming right up to your door real quick. Um, you know, it's like, oh, well, heck, you know, I, he knows, I guess he's here to see me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's just a natural thing. Are there any other preparations um leading up to getting to the door that you're doing? Um, sometimes finding the door. And, and what I mean by that is, like Chris was referring to, um, some of those we know that are, are buyers are the people that uh, never get seen because it's hard to find their addresses. Um, you know, a, a, a nice little tip to kind of add on to that would be find any house that's remotely close, knock on it. Absolutely. And ask them because most likely they know them. They oh yeah, they're up they're over there on Snake Hill. You gotta go over the river down that creek. It doesn't look like a road, but once you get past it, it turns into gravel and then it goes to dirt and then it goes to gravel again and then you go over another creek and they're up there on the left. You know, sometimes you have to find that and it's simple. Just instead of an agent that sits goes, Oh well, couldn't find this lead, couldn't find this lead, I'm really don't have that many opportunities, like not at all. You can find that lead. It's just going to be a little work, and it's almost like a little adventure. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference between work in rural and urban markets as well. I mean, Zach's talking about a rural area there, clearly, you know, and you've got to cross the river if the, if the water's high. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on. If you're working in the city, it's a little bit different. People are a little more resistant. Um, but the same concept works. So be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention to what's going on. 
Try to identify houses. And if you think you're close, you know, you can ask a neighbor. Like, don't be afraid to make yourself known as the professional. That's why it's important to wear, you know, a lanyard with an ID badge, like the one that I'm sporting here today, to keep in mind that the, these are important pieces. Um, a photo, a photo ID lanyard, um, so that you look professional and you're actually looking for somebody. You've got your leads on a clipboard and, um, you know, whether digital copies uh, printed or a physical direct mail response, and you've got those in hand and you're actually trying to identify and source people. Don't be afraid to talk to families, friends, neighbors. You'll be surprised at what happens and the doors that it opens. So make yourself friendly and people will be friendly back. Um, there's a key tip. Yeah, when you actually find the house and we do pull in, you know, this is where I really want to focus. And I'm, I'm analyzing, I'm scanning the area. I'm noticing what's in the front yard, what's in the backyard. Could be trampolines, it could be tricycles, it could be lifted trucks that are getting worked on with big tires, it could be four wheelers, go karts, it could be. Um, the a, world's largest gnome collection. The world, <laughs> yes, I've seen a, quite a bit of those. It could be, a, you know, somebody spends time on a garden or landscaping, like you notice these things, you notice team flags of teams they're cheering for. If it's NASCAR, if it's a certain college team, a pro team, I'm scanning and taking in everything because this is all bits of information of who these people are. This is their personality being expressed on the outside of their home. Do they have grandkids? Do they like kids? Do they have certain hobbies? So I'm scanning all of this because sometimes we have people that give us a little bit more resistance at the home. You know, um, and you probably have seen these. One thing that catches my eye every time is a little memorial bench or a little stone, a yeah. little plaque or, or some wind chimes that have mem- like a a verse or something in regards to someone's so passing. You, uh, stickers on the back of their vehicles mm. in memory of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, the vehicles that are actually in the driveway, how many are there? Um, even if they parked off the side of the driveway in the yard, are there ruts where a car should be or usually is, but is not there? Mm-hmm. Are there oil stains in a couple spots and there's no cars there? Well, mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things that you can pay attention to. There's some serious intel. So you've gathered all the information. You've pulled up to the home. You see that they are indeed home or that someone is home. What's that next step? How are we getting into the home to to make that presentation, make that sit? Simple. It's time to go knock. Time to go (laughs) knock. So I'm going to pull into the driveway, okay? Um, As I'm pulling into the driveway, I already have my clipboard there in my passenger seat with that lead card up. I have my ID badge already on, my mindset, my smile's on, I'm ready to go. My car is running. I simply pull into the driveway, immediately put it in park, grab my clipboard, open my door, and now I'm walking to the door. Now, I'm leaving my car running because I want that image that if I'm knocking on your door, Austin, you're going, oh, well, somebody's either lost or they're just going to deliver something or they're not going to stay here very long, okay? So as I'm walking up to the door, I'm not running because that would be really weird if I started running to your door. Um, I'm not dragging my feet and and taking all the time in the world. Once again, the longer I take, it, you're going to say, "Well, I'm least like I'm, you know, I'm less likely to open the door." So I'm just walking normal pace. I'm not looking on your at phone. not on my phone. I'm not talking to anybody. I don't have my Bluetooth in. Okay, the old school Bluetooth. Chris, yeah. you ever wear one of those? I can see you wearing one. No, I was <laughs> not a Bluetooth guy. <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm waving to the window. Uh, or the door, or the blinds. I'm waving at the entire front of the house. Because typically... Do you point? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that'd be really weird. <laughs> hey, you. No. Uh, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I do not point. But um, typically, if somebody pulls into my driveway, somebody in the house is going to say, who's that? Or I'm going to say, I wonder who that is. And I'm going to look. If I immediately wave, they're going to assume I saw them. Now, most likely I didn't. And sometimes you can see the curtains move or the blinds move or um, <laughs> every now and then the lights turn off. <laughs> but um, it, it, they're like, oh, man, they saw me. That's going to increase the likelihood that they're going to come to the door. Now, they have to because they don't, they don't want to be rude or they don't want me to think that they're rude. So I'm um, just approaching the home, very simple, and then now I'm going to start my door knock. What's the door knock look like? So for us, uh, when we train agents, we tell them to open the screen door if that's possible. Uh, (laughs) If there is one. If there is one. 
and uh, knock uh, a nice friendly rap. Oh, you know, like I, I guess I'll do it on the table. You know, like yeah. that. Do you all have your own like? Yeah, knock? that's a good like, question. Is this kind of like Inception, where you each have your own token. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Chris's door knock. No. Uh, the the whole idea behind that is to be non threatening and to be funny and joyful, um, because you do not want to do the old police knock. Um, you thud, know, thud, thud. You're gonna. I mean, you're gonna scare <laughs> them. They're gonna be like, hmm, because you always want to be their friend. So even when I'm going to the door and I am knocking and we are opening the screen door if they have it, I'm going to the door they use every day. I'm going to the door that their buddy comes over to play cards. And that might be a side door connected to the driveway. It doesn't always mean it's the front door. Sometimes it's it's the back door. If I know they have a long driveway and all the cars are parked kind of behind the house and you see all the grass is matted down, headed to the back door, that's the door I'm knocking on because that's the door their friends go to. That's the door if they hear a friendly, goofy knock, they're going to say or assume it's their buddy. Mm-hmm. Hey, come on in. You know, mm-hmm. um, It's going to give me that, that highest chance because I am their buddy. I want to be their friend. I'm going to be that bright spot. So definitely don't want to go to the door that has the spider webs on it that is never used. It mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense. What's your door knock sound like, Zach? Mine? Yeah. It's, uh, well, how am I going to do it here? Oh, that's the same I, as Chris. No, I, I no, don't. He I don't have finish the finish. It. He doesn't <laughs> have the finish because I like the mystery. You're like bum 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 bum. And then <laughs> Wait, you leave is it done? <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't have more? anything else. There. The yeah. mystery of Roger, it. Roger, do you have a, do you have a jingle? I don't think mine is. I he think just, mine is just more. Ro- Roger his, honks the horn and says, "I'm Roger Short." <laughs> <laughs> his has a Canadian accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but have you ever honked the horn? Yes, <laughs> when, they with, when they have dogs. Yes. When they have dogs. When they have dogs. Zach was with me once. That was different. Chris, <laughs> yes. Chris, Chris oh, has no. honked the horn out of anger. But uh, <laughs> oh, sometimes geez. if it's like a farm building or, you know, I don't know if there's dogs or not, the honking allows either A, dogs to come out, or B, if dogs are already out, the client will come to the door. Just a friendly beep beep. Yeah, I've been on some in some rural areas uh, in Kentucky sometimes or in, even in Indiana. If you get outside of Indianapolis area or get outside of the Louisville area here and you get in some of these farmlands, you're up on some big property sometimes. You know that there's things going on. Like you, there's a big workshop or a shed. Yeah. The door's open. There's yep. cars there. You just can't find anybody. You might have knocked on the door and there's no nothing's happening. You're like, I know there's people here. So it's okay to go back and do, you know, hit your horn a couple times, just those short crisps, you know, not the, you know, you don't want to lay on the horn, <laughs> but, you know, chirp, chirp. And all of a sudden someone will come looking. And when they do, you're looking around and you're waving at them as soon as they come. And then you're going to introduce yourself. That's a really so, good tip. Yeah. That's so it's good. just like the door knock. You're not doing the old police horn. The her. <laughs> 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 exactly, exactly. But, and, but let me tell you, there's another side to that on the door knocking. When you knock in a way that you hope somebody doesn't answer. And I've, I've seen new <laughs> agents do that. <laughs> it is the softest <laughs> little baby knock. A, that's they a, don't want to offend it's a or jar the people in the it's house. It's a scratch. They're like a little cat at the door. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a kitten wanting this some milk. But um, It's funny you say that because I actually have a philosophy about that. When Whenever I am training or riding along with agents, I like to crack the window and try to hear that. They'll either do that little uh, cat scratch at the door or they'll knock like two times within like 10 seconds and then start turning around and walking back to the car. <laughs> like, Here's the biggest thing for me. We want to knock on the hinge side of the door because it's going to resonate through the house. It's going to be louder. It's attached most right there. I mean, it's it's like a locked in with bolts. That's a nineteen dollar tip. That's a nineteen dollar oh. tip. And also, here's the other thing: the other side. Sometimes you knock on the other side where the door handle is, and the door will pop open. And that's that's a little awkward, right? Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you are knocking on the door, here here's the thing: if they are home and they're not answering, or I'm knocking loud regardless, I'm knocking loud and friendly. If they're not answering, I want to get in front of them regardless. So I'm going to knock again, knock again. I'm going to knock three good, my little tune, three different times really loud. Um, And if they're not home, it's not going to hurt their feelings that I knocked loud because they never heard it. It doesn't bother them one bit. If I go to the side door and knock now, it's not going to hurt their feelings because they're not home. They didn't hear it. So Mm -hmm. now if they are home and they come on the third knock, or they, when I finally knock on the side of the back door, then they finally come, and maybe they're upset or not, which I'm okay with because 
at least got an answer or an opportunity to let them know who I am and why I'm here. Because without that, do you know how many times I would have came to that same house and knocked on that front door three times and knowing they were home, but they were ignoring me? Like, I don't want that because then you're you're all week long knocking on the house eight times and the guy's sitting in there just flipping Zach, through the I channels. Had, I had that happen like eight weeks in. I had been to this house multiple times. There was a nice Mustang in the, the driveway. And I uh, knocked on the side door, which was appeared to be the point of entry. And uh, it was, I think, 8 o'clock at night. Parked, saw the Mustang pull in, jumped out, and knocked and knocked knocked. Nobody came. I, I saw you the person saw walk, in, walk in. Walk <laughs> in. And so this time I, I was a little frustrated, and I did the police knock. Uh-oh. <laughs> and the guy came to the door, how can I help you? And uh, I talked to him. I said, listen, I got it. He was really friendly. And I said, I got to tell you, I've been here like eight times and this car has been here. Do you, does somebody else drive you or how does that work? And he said, well, you probably just weren't knocking hard enough. That's what he told me. <laughs> I go in and their TV's blasting. Uh, never heard me. Never heard me. Yeah, That's a perfect I mean, example of the, that. At the end of the day, a lot of our clients, I mean, we don't, we serve the market from usually 50 to 85 Sometimes they have hard of hearing. Sometimes they have hearing aids, and they always have the TV on blast. <laughs> They're usually not in the front rooms. A lot of times it's a back room or a den or somewhere, and they just they just don't hear you. So knocking on multiple doors um, allows you to potentially get closer to their living room or wherever they are watching TV. But knocking loud, you have nothing to lose. If they're not home, they don't hear you. One of the other <clears throat> tips that you need to keep in mind is if there's no one answering that door, if it's in the spring, in the summer, if it's in the winter, uh, not so much in the winter, especially if you're in a northern climate where there's snow and all that stuff, but like people are out in the spring, in the summer, and they may be in their yard, they may be in the shed, they may be in the workshop at the back. Like, don't just assume that because they're not answering the garage, because they're not, it might be a separate detached garage, you know. Um, my dad had one of those, it's a separate detached garage, and it was kind of like his workshop and a place where we never put the car in there. It was all, all the other <laughs> stuff was in there. You know, it was it turned into a workshop. And don't be afraid to go back there and look around the corner. You'll especially even in the city, you'll you'll find people with little gardens and they're they've got, you know, twelve tomato plants on their back deck and they're tending to them. Or he might be in the in the workshop at the back doing something or putting up a ladder because he was just doing something on the side of his house. Like or someone's getting ready to mow the yard. Like, don't be afraid to walk around the back, introduce yourself, wave. Don't assume because they didn't usually turn around. I'm and come hollering, back to the car. hello, just being real yeah. friendly. I mean, it's not, yeah. don't and sneak if, back and there. If you see neighbors, like, say, hey, how are you? Mm-hmm. Do you know yeah. Susan? Do you know Miss Susan? Oh, well, who are you? Wait, uh, Miss Jones has a first name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm with senior benefits and she'd request some information. I'm just trying to catch her. I thought she was home, but I don't know if she, no, her car is not here. You know, all of a sudden now you're getting more information. You're gathering more information. So don't settle with just the no answer at the door. Like be proactive. Go back there and look. I mean, I've sold policies in those workshops in the back mm-hmm. because I found him back there. And we ended up sitting back there, and he was working on something, and we ended up doing the presentation back there and signing them up right there in the in the garage. So awesome. don't negate that. So you've knocked on the door with your little jingle. Someone does answer. Well, here's where it all starts right here because it doesn't matter how good you are at closing. doesn't matter how good you are in your presentation. If you can't get in the door, well, you, you're not going to get in the You're out of business. <laughs> you're out of business. <laughs> so uh, the first thing here is, Austin, I want to answer three questions. Three questions that they're asking me non-verbally. It's in their mind right now. Everybody that you mean, mind tricks. Yeah, you mean people have questions they in do. their mind? And that, it's these three. What? Yeah, so get your pins ready. But these three questions, as soon as you pull in the driveway, they're wondering, who are you? Who are you with? Why are you here? That's what they all want to ask. Now, I want to answer those questions in a slow, calm manner, but I'm also controlling the pace not allowing them to ask those questions. So I'm giving them all three answers, and then I'm going to get my stuff, and we're going to have this sit. So you may be like, well, how in the world does that work? Well, the only thing they're concerned about right now is those three questions. Who are you? Who are you with? And why are you here? So that's the first three things I'm going to say. So when I'm knocking on the door, and uh, I do a little, uh, I call it the door knock dance. This is gold. This is so good. 
This remind Chris when you said this is gold because Zach's getting ready to drop some pearls here, some science. Yeah, he's getting ready to drop some gold. And uh, one of our listeners, I think her name was Sarah from Washington. So Sarah, if you're listening, this is a shout out to you. You had uh, shot us some comments, uh, I think uh, last week or the week before, saying, um, "I would love to know how to master the door. I've had some success a couple times getting in." But it's those times where they can't afford it as soon as I say who I am or what I'm doing there. Um, you know, so she's, she's struggling to get in and maybe getting some objections at the door. Zach, I know that you're going to be dropping some gold here. And I hope Sarah's listening because this is really going to help you understand what to do up front to eliminate most of those objections. So this is for you, Sarah. First of all, Sarah, we have all been there, every single one of us. We've all been in your seat right now listening, trying to figure out how to do this, how to get in the door. Um, but this entire podcast, this entire episode, all these little things are extremely important because it's it's it builds on itself to be able to get into the door. You can't just do say the right thing, but everything, all your prep is wrong. So everything we've talked about is crucial to get into the door. But as I'm knocking on that door, I'm going to take about two or three steps back because I want to, A, give them room. I don't want to encroach on their door. I don't want them to feel pressured or anything. I'm trying to lower these barriers. Also, if I'm stepping back, it gives the the door room to open so they can step out because the one thing I, I don't want, and Sarah, you might have experienced this, is for them to crack the door and say, can I help you? <laughs> we don't that six inch opening <laughs> but that that is not uh that is not usually very good so i want to be able to almost invite them out by stepping back now as soon as they come i'm gonna you know good energy and not not crazy high energy natural energy when i say natural energy that's who i am as a person if i'm a very high uh bubbly super energy person well then be yourself if you're more of an introverted, you're a lower energy person, that's wonderful. Be yourself. But one thing you can't do is you can't be the low energy person trying to pretend to be the high energy person because it's not genuine. So be yourself. As soon as they come out, I'm going to say, hey, are you Mr. Austin? He's going to say, well, yeah, right? Now, naturally, he's going to say, who are you? I'm not going to let him say that. I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Austin, my name is Zach McWayne, and I'm with Senior Benefit Services. Now, Mr. Austin, and at this moment, I've already answered two of the questions, who I am and who I'm with, before he had to say anything. I just confirmed I'm talking to the right person. Now, imagine this. I'm, step, I'm stepped away, and as I'm telling him who I am, I'm leaning forward with one step, leaning forward with my badge, and I'm getting down low. So what that's going to do, if you can imagine the client in this situation, they're going to slightly step out the door because they're going to lean in just as I'm leaning in and it's going to invite them out because they're going to look at my ID badge. Zach, you say I'm getting low. That's because you're tall. Right, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so we got some short listeners on here. You, we don't want you getting lower. Well, it's really, you're getting low because you're leaning forward. I'm getting low because I'm stepping and leaning forward. So if you're short, you're getting even shorter, which is fine. And you're making yourself less intimidating. That's exactly and more what inviting. It is. Yeah, that more than anything, I'm not. My stature is Science shrinking the in their presence. I don't want to be oh, Mister Strongman at the gym and, and flexing on them at the door. I don't want to do that. I mean, no matter how big you. That's are. really hard for me. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> right, right. I have to tone it down. Yeah, you do too many push-ups. But uh, as you're doing that, I'm answering who I am and who I'm with as I'm leaning down. Naturally, that door is going to be partly open. It's going to open more, and they're going to come out just another step to look at my ID card. Okay? At this moment, um, I'm going to say, now, Mr. Austin, the reason I'm here is it looks like at this moment I'm taking my step where I leaned forward and now I'm shifting beside them, shoulder to shoulder, because here's the idea. We are going to do this entire process together. This is a togetherness. This is called the door dance. The door dance. So I'm, I'm, I'm going beside him now. So, I've, I've, so to take, walk you through, I've stepped back. I knocked on the door, stepped back, take one step, lean forward and get low, and now I'm shifting beside of them and showing them my clipboard. Now, if you can imagine, we're both shoulder to shoulder, looking down at my clipboard, looking down at this lead card. Leaning in. Leaning in together. He's out of the door at this point, naturally, which is great. So, Mr. Austin, now it looks like you filled out this card here, 
requesting more information on the state-regulated final expense programs in than your state, Kentucky, Indiana, Georgia, right? Washington. 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 Right? And it, um, it, so, so, Mr. Austin, it looks like you filled out this card here requesting more information on the state-regulated final expense programs here in Washington. And is this your handwriting here? Is that yours? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, great. I got your information in the car. I'm going to go get it, and I'll be right back. But here's the magic about this, Austin, because I'm getting in your house here in a minute. But we're standing side by side. We're leaning down, looking at this clipboard together. I'm dragging my finger across the card, okay, and, re- and, I'm, sl- and I'm going slow and clear because you're an older man. Not really, but in this scenario you are. I want to be clear. I want to be slow. I want to walk you through, say those key words that's going to make him remember. Identify you did fill this out. This is your handwriting, which is key. That's our anchor point. He's saying, yes, that's my handwriting. In my mind, he's saying, yes, go get your stuff. Come into my home. We'll talk about this. We'll go through everything. We'll build trust. We'll do a good presentation. Then you'll leave with an application. (laughs) That's what he's saying to me, right? But now the key is the timing of turning and going. I don't have to turn very far. I'm already staring at my car because we're shoulder to shoulder, right? It's literally now one step right off the porch to go get my stuff. So... To walk you through that again, just the dance part. You knock, you step back, one step forward, lean in, show them the ID badge, shift side with them, shoulder to shoulder. You're looking at the clipboard together, dragging your finger across, reading it to them, saying, great, got your stuff, and I'm taking one step right off the porch and going to get it. There's not an opportunity there for you to interrupt me or give me objections because of my energy, uh, my confidence, but most importantly, my pace. And, and, one of and, the, and your process. I mean, the process. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not waiting there for him to ask you a question. That's mm-hmm. not what you're there, right? You're not waiting for him to say, yeah, what is this about? Or right. do you have something for me? You're assuming I've identified, he's acknowledged, now I'm going to get and I'm coming back. Yeah, and here's one of the, the greatest mistakes agents make door knocking. They think that I got a knock on the door talk as fast as I can, and trick them into going to get my stuff. (laughs) And that is the absolute wrong thing to do because the moment you talk too fast for them to understand or the moment you are not clear and precise on what you're saying, boom, you're a scam. Every single time. You're right. They lose trust immediately. Immediately because you didn't care enough to just explain what it is. They didn't have any – they don't remember it at this point. Boom, they're not interested every single time. I've got a, I've got a pop quiz for Austin Uh-oh. to see how well he's been paying attention. Are you ready, buddy? All right, here's the question. What, what is the point of a door knock? To get in the door. Now, that seems like a simple answer, right? But most, not, most new agents, okay? We'll, we'll use new agents or people who are slumping for a little bit, okay? They are thinking the point of the door knock is to sell a life insurance policy, And that is a very different mindset because now they're trying to sell at the door. So if somebody starts talking, even if you're doing the dance, Zach, I'm sure you're doing the dance and somebody says, well, I I can't really afford anything right now. Me neither. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's not about that. It's not a big deal. So if you think about the process of the lead, the life cycle of the lead, okay, at some point, they filled out a request for information, whether it's online, whether um, they called it in for an MP lead, whatever it was. Okay, they filled out a request for a reason. They weren't sure when they were going to get information back or how they were going to get information back, but they did it out of the love and a need for something, and they were curious. The curiosity was what it is. That does not change if you're setting appointments on the phone or if you're knocking at the door because the moment you go to that door – you're letting them know, hey, you know, this is the card you requested, or this is the information you requested, but at the door, I'm, they've been curious long enough to wait for somebody to come or something to come in the mail, and now I want to keep them curious long enough to be able to get in the home, build trust with them and a relationship, then we're finally going to talk about the information, finally. Yeah, this is a segmented process, so you have to segment it in your mind. Prep. Door knock. The goal of the door knock is to sit down with them to have a conversation. 
Sometimes you end up not going in the home. We can talk about that in a minute, but you, you actually present somewhere else. Uh, but the whole goal is to sit down with them to have a conversation. That's it. Don't that's think all. beyond that. Don't that is think, the sale. That's I got to make a sale today. I got to make mm-hmm. a sale today. If that's in your mind, you're already losing, right? right? You have to segment this process. Your goal is to sit down with them. So what makes it the most, uh, what, what, what's the easiest way to make them the most comfortable to sit down with you? Assume that this process is going to work. Trust it. Uh, Zach, do you want to finish what happens when you turn and go? Uh, because there's some other key golden nuggets in there that I think people like Sarah and others. And guys, if you're listening to the podcast today and you have thoughts or contributions or any questions or clarifications or anything like that about what we're talking about, we'd love to have your feedback. Go ahead and put it on the on the uh, website for liapodcast.org. And we'd, tweet I, us. You can tweet yeah, us. Tweet even, us. Right? We're on the Twitter on machines. Instagram, Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. LinkedIn. But we'd love to hear some feedback. But Zach's got some more gold here he's going to lay on you about when he turns and goes. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and back to the, the actual spiel of what I say, it's very consistent. You know, who uh, who I am, who I'm with, and why I'm here. My name is Zach McWain. I'm with Senior Benefit Services. And Mr. Austin, the reason I'm here is because it looks like you filled out this card requesting more information on the state-regulated final expense programs here in Wyoming. Is this your handwriting here? Okay, great. I got your information in the car. I'm going to go get it, and I'll be right back. Turning and going. Going to the car. All of a sudden, my, you know, my door's open. My car's already running. I reach in, turn the car off. Grab my phone. Close the door. Grab my bag. And now I'm walking up with a big grab smile. Grab your bag before you close the door. That'd probably be a good idea. Well, actually, I keep my bag in the back seat. Because it, it's a pain trying to drag yeah, it from the it passenger is, it over. Is, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I grab my bag and turn the car off and I lock it. Not that I think they're going to, you know, um, <laughs> try to get into my car, but um, it lets them know that, oh, hey, he's going to sit for a few minutes. Mm-hmm. He's coming in. Mm-hmm. It's a sign, right? It's a nonverbal asking of permission to come in. Because one thing you never want to do is ask permission, right? Now, as I'm coming up, all those items that we saw when we pulled into the home, the tricycle, the lifted trucks, the boat in the driveway, whatever's there, this is going to help bridge that gap of coming in. So a lot of times I was like, man, that's a great truck. What year is that? Is that you know, it's, well, it's, that's a 97 and it's got 44-inch mud tires on it, whatever. you know. And I, we can talk about that as I'm approaching up and boom, all of a sudden the door opens wide and we walk right on in. You know, I'm also a human again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not about being salesy. You can't be robotic. You can't be rehearsed. You got to be natural in your door knock. You have to show your personality. If that's, uh, you know, an introvert, an extrovert, it doesn't matter. You have to have the right pace going through it. Um, and ultimately, you have to you have to have the inflection in your voice to let them know that you're just a real guy. You're just a real person going to see them. One of the things that when we turn and go... And, you know, we're looking back to the car. We're shoulder to shoulder with them. Great. I've got your information in the car for you. I'm going to go get that for you right now. I'm nodding my head. Yes, I'm nodding my head up and down. And so it's this nonverbal uh, sales sign. You're nodding your head. So, Austin, I'm doing that to you right now. You're nodding your head back at me, I, I right? Am I? It's so weird. This is right? so weird. <laughs> so, so I'm nodding my head saying, I'm going to go get your information for you. My head is going up and down. Guess what they're doing back to me? They start nodding back. So what did they just give me permission to do? To go get it. To go get it. Mm. I, I enticed that permission by creating that moment. So then I'm walking to the car, grab our stuff, grab our bag, lock the door. I'm walking back to the car. I'm smiling. I'm making some comment about you know one of the surroundings, you know the, 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 the kid's swing set or the, the tricycle or uh, the, the new flower boxes that are out there now with the, with the roses in them or something, you know, whatever that is. You make a little comment as you're approaching the door. Right, I pause for just a moment, not stop, but just pause, and I just wipe my feet. One, two. There's a little trick. One, two. Just wipe your feet and say, thanks for having me for just a minute as you're reaching for the door. Thanks for having me for just a minute. It's never, can I come in and talk to you about this for a few moments? Thanks for having me for just a minute. Your head kind of goes down. You're wiping your feet. As you look back up, you keep moving forward. 95 times out of 100, they're going to open the door and let you come in. There's other tricks. I never did the feet wiping. Uh, one of them is to reach out for the hand, get them, give them a handshake. Mm-hmm. They take their hand off the door, and you grab the door with your left hand. Mm-hmm. And then they just move right out of the way. The Another one is, is would you like me to take my shoes off? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a simple question. Just a simple question. You mm-hmm. want me to take my shoes off? Oh, uh, 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 no, 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 that's okay. 
If you ask <laughs> to take your shoes off, they assume, they know that you already assume that you're coming in. Mm-hmm. So the answer is not, can I come in or not? The, the, the question is not, can I come in or not, is do you want me to take my shoes off while I'm coming in or should I keep them on while I'm coming in? Both answers are I'm coming in. Mm-hmm. So there's some really good little techniques there that you can employ, um, and it helps bridge that process. The biggest thing I would say is to assume that you're going in. Your posture and your confidence with that assumption puts you in that home. If you're hesitant, they get nervous about your nervousness. Right. They 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 need and want somebody to be confident. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I would say... The most common thing that I train on is slight adjustments because they, oh, I do everything exactly the same like you, but I can't get into the door. Well, when you see it, a lot of it is body language, and that's so important at the door. Even the, the, the door knock dance that I talk about, a lot of times they will say exactly the same thing I do, but they'll say, okay, uh, I got information in my car. I'm going to get it, and we'll talk to you. And just that extra one or two seconds of eye contact, that standing flat-footed in front of them, what do you think they're going to say every single time? They're going to ask you a question. They're going to ask you a question. They're going to you're you're asking permission. Even if you're not saying verbally, if you're saying, "Do you have a few minutes? I got some information I'd like to go over with you." You're asking permission. They're going to say, "No, it's not a good time. No, I'm not feeling well. I already oh, have insurance." I already have insurance. They're going to say something every time because you're asking permission. Even if you don't ask permission and say, "Hey, I got some information. I'm going to get it and I'll be right back." But you wait. The pause, that pause at the door where there's dead air and you're not taking action to move forward invites a question, invites a criticism, invites an objection. We're going to go over some of these same things with a phone call in in one of our next episodes on setting appointments. It's the same as if you make a statement and you don't then move towards setting the appointment and you just leave that open. You are inviting another question, objection, a stall, a put off. You're simply not wanting to get into the door. Yeah, you're not, you're not wanting to get in the door. And you're you immediately go into trying to sell at the door. Mm-hmm. That's what you immediately. Well, go what's into. this about? Well, these are about the. Is that what you wanted? Right. Well, I already have life insurance, and now you're in this dialogue. Oh, well, How much right. you paying for your life insurance? Yeah, you've got another policy. Is it whole life or is it term? Is? I mean, everything is happening. It yeah. breaks down it's fast. Out of control. Yeah, yeah. So when people get objections at the door, so Sarah, you're listening, right? Sometimes we get objections at the door because we're not doing some of these other things. Uh, so in a lot of instances, we don't have good rebuttals for the objections because a lot of the objections are handled by doing these things up front and you're eliminating the objections. You're el- eliminating. In fact, when we don't do the things that we just outlined, you're creating your own barriers and you're inviting objections. So let's eliminate the highest percentage of those and get to it. Now, we still get some and we're going to address some of those, I think, uh, briefly. But what happens... What happens, guys, when they don't want you to come in? That's another question uh, that I think we probably need to address. Well, they're not going to tell you that. Like half the objections that we get are not real objections, meaning, oh, it's not a good time. I'm not feeling well. Well, a lot of our clients are older. They're on a bunch of prescription medications. Some are on disability. They're never going to feel well. Like to be honest, never feel well. Um, The other, you know, one we get all the time is, oh, I'm getting ready to leave. But they're obviously not in the attire that they're going to leave. They've been, yeah. They're going to be there all day, right? But what's the real reason behind what they're saying? It's just like the, the other series we talked about and the five real reasons why people don't buy. It's not always the objection they give you. Mm. So a lot of times that is, hey, I'm really embarrassed in my house. It's not the cleanest. It doesn't smell the best. I have too many dogs. I have uh, family members living with me that I don't want to talk about this. They're not going to say any of that. Instead of saying that to you as the guy at the door, they're going to say, it's not a good time. I'm not feeling well. We're already completely taken care of. We already have that in place. And that is not the case. Now is not a good time. And it might not be a good time for you to go in that house because they weren't ready for you to show up. There's there's times when people show up at my house, even friends, and I'm like, am I, you know, Rose and I will be like, oh, you know, we have, to, we have to immediately overcome <laughs> the fact that we're not ready for company, but we need to be okay with it because they're mm. our friends, so they're coming in anyway. Mm. But when a stranger comes to your door, stranger, even though you might have requested information, if you, in your mindset, um, my house is not clean, uh, I'm, we're not dressed, you know, there's people in here that are sleeping, like there's all kinds of variables. 
what are your options? Your options are to bail out and say, okay, well, I'll come back at another time, or what are some other options? Well, here's the crazy thing. If if you believe that objection, that's not a good time, what happens when you go tomorrow evening and you knock on the door? The they real, don't answer. The real reason is they're not embarrassed. They're mm. embarrassed of their home. They don't answer the They next don't evening. answer, or it's still not a good time. Right. Or now <laughs> they're mad at you that you came back. What has changed in their life that's so drastic, right? Yeah. I mean, it's nothing's going to change from... Have they really spent the last 24 hours cleaning their house? Because Zach's coming (laughs) over. Right. (laughs) No, not at all. Not at all. And and the biggest thing to that is whatever objection you get, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. We're the busiest people in the world. We have a ton of people to get to. It's the urgency factor, right? And that that, that is also at the door. So, oh, no, don't worry, Mr. Austin. I said, this just takes a few minutes. I'm going to get your stuff, and I'll be right back. But let's say even then... Right, like they say, well, now's you know really not a good time. Then what? Okay, then I'm thinking, is he is he giving me a BS again, or is is he actually leaving? He has his coat in his hand, he has his keys, and he's really got to go pick his grandkids up from softball practice. Mm -hmm. Right, like there's a difference between being a real objection and a non-real objection. And the longer you're in the business, you can understand that. Mm -hmm. I'll say, I'll say this to you. I said, no big deal, Mister Austin. I got all these other people I need to see as I'm flipping through my lead cards. Um, I tell you what, um, I got all these other people need to see. I'm going to go take care of a few other folks, and I'm going to try to see if I can squeeze you in this evening. So if it is dark and you do see headlights, um, don't worry, Mr. Austin. It's just me, and I'll see you later. And mm-hmm. then I'm, I'm going to go because I know I'm really not going to have an opportunity. At that point... That's if he's leaving the house. Right. <laughs> that's if you actually have your right. keys and you're already leaving yeah. and you weren't expecting me, which is almost never, by the way. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create urgency and I'm going to have the mindset of he had missed his opportunity with me. He's been waiting for this information and, Ooh, I better be ready tonight because if I'm not ready for him to come tonight, um, I'm going to lose my opportunity on these state regulated programs. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's almost taking it away from them a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the art of being and staying in control. The one thing I would never want to say there is, when's a better time for me to come back? Yeah. No. Because that gives them control. Because it's going to be next week, and then next week comes, Mm -hmm. then it's come back at the beginning of the year, come back after the holidays. You will never sit with them. You will never sit with them. Zach, recently you said that you've even sat in your car to to sit with the client. Oh, yeah, especially in the wintertime because – when they have, I mean, there's clients, I mean, you're going to care for your clients regardless of the situation. You always put your clients first. And sometimes when it's really cold or um, sitting on the front porch is kind of not a great option. I actually had to sit two weeks ago where I sat on the front porch, it was 30 degrees. My kneecaps were shivering the entire <laughs> time, but uh, we ended up getting an application out of it. Um, but Isn't yeah. that crazy, Austin, when you think about that? Yeah, right. Like, uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was a long sit, um, but... It doesn't matter where it is. If it's you know, if it's really cold, and I'm saying, how about this? I understand. Why don't you just come out to my car? We'll do it in there. I'll turn the heat on, uh, you know, and we'll just talk in there, and it'll be comfortable. Okay, no problem. Because I don't want their house to be a barrier why they don't protect their family. Mm-hmm. I don't want anything to be a barrier. I've done applications on a farm fence post right next to a tractor in the middle of a field, um, and I've done them in barns. I've done them tons in my cars. I've done them at restaurants. <laughs> I've done them at McDonald's. Um, I've done them. Bank parking lots. Hotel lobbies. I mean, Mm -hmm. everywhere. I've taken clients to the bank um, and back home. I mean, you do whatever you have to do to serve your clients. Um, One objection, and it's not necessarily an objection, but maybe you're on a a string of bad door knocks and you're a new agent and you don't have anybody there, the support to be able to call up and kind of recalibrate or come into an office or watch a video to kind of get you back on target. Um, one key advice I would say is when you're going up to the door, look for those connection items and start giving your clients a compliment at the beginning, just a simple compliment, and then tell them who you are. Anything to slightly lower that wall that they have built up. Say, hey, Miss Jones, how are you? I really like that shirt, by the way. Is your favorite color purple? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, anyways, Miss Jones, my name is Zach McWin. And then I go into it, but I got to smile after her. Because we serve a, a market that is definitely underserved, undervalued, not the highest income. And a lot of when's the last time somebody's gave them a compliment or told them something nice? So sometimes 
All it takes is a tiny compliment. Hey, is, is this? Do you have grandkids? Because I don't think this tricycle's yours. Yeah. Just anything <laughs> at the beginning, yeah. just to get a crack, a smile, a compliment, make them feel good about themselves. That will ease the tension for you to go through your rest of your door knock. I think uh, that is one of my favorite things. Uh, is that humor covers a multitude of sins and, and door knocking. It, it, it needs to be light. It doesn't need to be a big deal, especially with an objection. When somebody says, well, how long is this going to take? I'll tell them, oh, don't worry, Mrs. Jones, it's only going to take six hours. You know, And uh, I think people would be afraid to say something like that, but uh, it, you know, it's going to take that long or you know, something like that. I'm like, don't <laughs> worry, it's not going to take that long. It just takes a minute. Let me grab your stuff, you know. And joking around with people, it, it really puts their dukes down. Yeah, if you're a, a more serious, straightforward person and you don't have Chris's personality, which humor yeah. comes very naturally for him, for him to roll that off his tongue, he doesn't even think about it. For someone else, Austin, oh, it's only going to take six hours. You're, like, you're waiting for it to land. Your eyes are big and you're nervous because you don't know if you just, you know, you know. Chris said the to joke. say it. Chris, Chris said, said to say it. it. So, like, you, but you just need to bring your energy up yes. a little bit and mm. relax. Just bring your energy it needs up. needs to be light. Bring your energy up a little bit and just relax. Smile, relax, and, and, and go with it. Wow, what a packed episode. If you have further questions or need help, with door knocking, feel free to shoot us a message on social media or drop us a note on our website. We know that this subject is a cornerstone to your business and we want to make sure that you have all the tools you need to be successful. Thanks again for listening to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. To access the show notes and resources we mentioned today, visit liapodcast.org slash EP10. That's liapodcast.org slash EP number 10. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening and rate us five stars. Give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by going to Life Insure a CAD. That's at Life Insure a CAD. The Life Insurance Academy podcast is hosted, edited, and mixed by me, Austin Lopes Rivero. This episode was produced by Roger Short and myself. Our theme song is by Flashing Lights. We'll catch you on another episode, including next week's show, where we'll discuss another topic that will help you get in front of more clients. That's the topic of appointment setting. Until next time, drive safely and go be a difference maker.